Ladies and gentlemen, that gentleman sipping on his coffee in California is a star of radio, television, movies, records. Records. But you don't have a, you don't have a, uh, what do they call it when you win all those three things? You know, oh, yeah. The, when you win a, a EGOT. Totally a Grammy, an EGOT. An EGOT. An Emmy, an Academy Award. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. have nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Hmm. Records. God, I feel like I was Sherman. But, uh, oh, anyway, you know, so I, I start a show. I start an interview, and my phone that, decides to ring, and of course, it's from Farmingdale, New York, which means it's, uh, you know, I have to turn what, off my... What, what does that mean? Because from the island, so who would be calling you? I don't know. I have to turn off my phone, okay? And then I have well, to... Well, interesting you're doing that, because I um, I have Do Not Disturb here on my iPad, but my house phone yeah. might, hasn't rung in two days, but I'm expecting a call from the exterminator. Oh. i got to talk to him. Yeah. One of the lovely problems of home ownership um <laughs> what you know once there's one then there's another thing what, it, what it's you, like the golden gate bridge you know they finish painting it they gotta they start, gotta all, start over all over again, again. what what, right. what what the what the pests do you have that have to be exterminated my girlfriend no, okay <laughs> good night folks <laughs> da, 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 da. um you know what i have yeah. I, I had a couple of rats under the house so they it's a very exciting story but what's very <laughs> weird this house I, I think I've told you this before. I, I Look, I don't really believe in hauntings and stuff, but, you know, yeah. I've always felt there's so many shows on TV and there's so many hauntings. If, if one point, if one percent of them are real, it's like UFOs, then they're out there. So yeah. this house, the original owner, yeah. had shot himself in the head in my bedroom way before I had the house. <laughs> and some creepy stuff was going on in this house. And, you know, my daughter and my wife uh, saw it more than I did because I was on the road, but it was creepy stuff. A lot of it could be written off to, you know, the dogs barking, nothing. Well, it could be, you know, mice or rats in the rafters. And then there's, you know, houses move and change, and whatever. But there was a lot of creepy stuff. So I think the ghost is long gone. But the other day I go in my bathroom and there's a million flies. It was like, what was that movie? Was it uh, Long Island? What was that house? The Amityville Horrors. The Amityville Horrors, yeah. Yeah, and then, but there was no way for them to get in the bathroom. And I was just killing them and killing them and killing them. I, I killed hundreds of flies. So maybe that has to do with the haunting. I, I don't know. Mm. So mm. But now they're coming for rats. Great story. I'm full of great, great stories. stories. That's why you have me great on. stories. Great uh, stories. Somebody killed themselves in your house before you bought it. Yeah, it's an odd story. Um, I, I also think they filmed gay porn here. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't do that anymore. Wait a minute. How do, um, you know, how do you know they filmed gay porn there? Were you watching a gay porn sometime? And I don't know. Yes, yeah. Because... Um, some neighbors uh, uh -huh. when we moved in and when i heard the story about the guy who killed himself which i'll tell you in a second yeah. said there'd be occasionally a film crew here and they never saw any women they saw like real buff looking guys i guess or something like that so they figured it was gay porn hmm. that they shot here but um anyway so no what happened was because i talked to my neighbor about this the guy that was living and i still get his mail occasionally back when they built this house i don't know in the late 60s yeah. um there was a doctor that lived here and he had just, I think, lost, uh, broken up with his girlfriend or wife. Mm -hmm. And he had got laid off from his job at a hospital. So he was out of work. He, he didn't have a wife. He was very, very depressed and uh, he couldn't find a job, I guess. So he shot himself because the neighbor didn't know why the mail was uh, piling up. And he came and he found he found him in the bedroom, uh, my bedroom now mm -hmm. uh, with a gunshot to the head. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, his brother said he came to the house to you know, take care of everything. And on his messaging machine, there was a, a, a job, there was a call for the guy for, mm -hmm. for a job. It was like a Twilight Zone episode. Right. So, I don't know. Yeah. That was a long time ago. It was way before there was somebody else. Now, now my, qu my question to you is, when they sell a house and somebody right. killed themselves in it, they have to reveal that information. It's right? only five years. At least, at least in California, they only have to tell you something happened in five years, within the last five years. And this had happened a long time ago. Oh, so okay. nobody told us. Oh, so the, so the guy, did, the guy that had the house before you didn't kill himself. No, no, is oh. I think the original owner, the second one, back in the, I think back in the seventies, maybe even early eighties. Yeah, oh, 70s, okay. That went down to the eighties. Right. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. So now you wanted to talk about this book I hear, right? What? Uh, no, I don't want to hear about their book. Well, well, why am I talking to them? We just talked. Well, I mean, if we're friends and uh, we like to talk to each other. And I, I figured I'd just give you a call. In spite of the fact all these messages keep coming up on the screen, folks. I'm sorry about that. But I just fixed it. Are those from your imaginary viewers? F from my imaginary viewers. You're right. They are imaginary viewers. Well, whatever you got to do. Yeah, they're yeah. also my imaginary best friends. 
So That's anyway, great. okay. Anyway, anyway. So um, um, uh, where were we? Oh yeah, your book. Know. Your book. You take you take the lead. Yeah, you wanted to call me. Yeah, you don't want to talk to me unless you want to talk said. about the book. You don't want to just talk to your old pal Al, right? Well, what do you want to talk about? We already covered the dead guy. I'll talk about anything. Well, what about this book? You didn't tell well, me you were writing a book. Well, I think this is why I didn't tell you because I didn't write the book. It says on the cover that I wrote the book. Okay. It, the your book name is, is called, on the cover as an author. It says by Bobby right. Slayton and I don't know, Schleimy Tall. Tony Norman, who's a publisher in England who just coincidentally flew in today. We're having dinner this evening. Mm -hmm. But um, um, the, the, guy that wrote, the guy that put out the book, Tony Norman, has a... Um, an incredible, beautiful publishing company called Real Art Press. Yeah. Um, they do some beautiful books. They did one, big coffee table books. They did one on Led Zeppelin. I think he had one that just came out about Queen. And my friend John Kish, who had, until he um, sold it to George Lucas, the biggest collection of black movie posters, you know, from the beginning of time, mm -hmm. you know, from Mantan Moreland and Lena Horne and oh, wow. all, all the way up. Wow. It's a complete collection. Yeah, everything. Really rare, rare, rare stuff. So they did a coffee table book. That's how I met this publisher. Anyway, uh, they, they do some really classy work. And he calls me up a few months ago and said, um, in conjunction with a gallery in Barcelona, they're doing a series of books about Jews. And one book is going to be a book on Jewish comedians. And it's not so much the history of comedy. It's a small book. And I didn't realize this until I, he only had so much room in the book. It's called A Small Book of Jewish Comedians. And so he shows me the list of some of the comedians. And I see on the list, Phyllis Diller, not Jewish. Robbie Williams, certainly not Jewish. Jonathan Winters, I go, don't you have a computer? Where? I go, I think you need my help here. You don't have Shecky Green on here. Um, you know, he had a lot of the usual suspects. He had, uh, you know, Jackie Mason and, um, you know, Sid Caesar and Carl Reiner. Yeah. Even though they weren't stand-up comics, Don Rickles. But there were a lot of comics he didn't have. And I said, why don't I help you with the list? I think they could be and considered. Then, I think they could be considered comedians, but not comics. There's a difference. Right. Well, it's, it's called the book on, on comedians. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he wanted um, Gilda Radner in there. She certainly was a sketch. She wasn't a stand-up. But, but she, was like a she was a comedian. She was a comedian. She, she wasn't a comic. A comic stands up and right. tells jokes. A comedian right. can do skits right. and sketches. Can right. be well, this is a book of comics and comedians. It's it's yeah. a combination of the two. Yeah. Um, but what he wanted was, and again, it was his book. He wanted four good jokes or four jokes for each of the comedians. I don't know why he picked four, but he wanted four. By the way, there's there's one in the mail um, coming to you. Really? Uh, hey, uh, do I have the ability to reject it if I don't want it? You could do whatever you want. You can regift, <laughs> although I signed it to you. So if you can find somebody named Alex, you know maybe one of the people. Oh, from I wish I, you, I wish you hadn't signed it to me. I'll tell you why. I found out by watching Pawn Stars that if you have a a, a, a autograph, right, and it has two so and so, it's less valuable right. than if it's just the autograph. Well, I don't know how valuable this is with or without the autograph. So um, anyway, so you know, so I'm getting it. Signed to your wife too. Well, so I'll put it right next to my autograph of uh, John Lennon. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. he wanted four jokes for each comedian. And there were a lot of comedians in that book that had to be in there that weren't known as joke guys. You know, there was Steve Landisberg, mm -hmm. who I actually had to, you know, you can Google and go on the internet and find jokes from most everybody. But, you know, a lot of them don't play in print. A lot of the quotes are not necessarily comedic quotes. It's sometimes a comic talking about politics or show business. He wanted jokes. So, like, one guy that was kind of hard to find was Jerry Lewis, because Jerry Lewis it, it, had it, to be in there. Whether you're a Jerry Lewis fan yeah, or not. Yeah, but, but, there are no, but there are no, I can't think of a joke Jerry Lewis told. Well, you know what? He did play Las Vegas a lot, so he would do jokes. Oh, he really? Would say, okay. Well, it's in the book. There's a few things, you know. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think this joke is in the definition of a wrench where Jewish cowboys go. A wrench. You know, <laughs> uh, but there were a lot of comics. Like, for example, there was, um, you know, he only had so much room. Yeah. For so many comics. And for some reason, this wasn't my idea. He had two pages on Gary Shamley, who I love, two pages yeah. on Henny Youngman, and two pages on Rodney Dangerfield. And I said, well, if you would have just had one in there, we could have got more guys in there like Robert Schimmel, uh, Bob Saget, John Lovitz. There, there was a lot of people. Um, yeah. Although there's another example. I looked up Bob Saget, one of my, a good friend, one of my favorite comics. But he wasn't a joke guy. Uh, Myron Cohen's not in there because he told stories. Steve Landisberg was hard to find. Well, it's Bob Saget. A, Bob, Saget did, Bob Saget did stand up. No, he don't. He did stand up, but he, he, you know, I couldn't find a lot of his jokes. In other words, there weren't like a line 
My wife's so oh, fat why? that. Oh, yeah, no, right. Now, Henny Youngman, you had no problem. <laughs> yeah, there was no problem. I mean, it's just, it's get, yeah. he's and, just and, one and, uh, joke after another. I had Rodney Dangerfield, there was no problem. Yeah. And I really wanted David Tell in there, even though a lot of people don't know him. He's one of my generation. I, he's he's a, has great lines. And he's in there. Gilbert Godfrey's in there. So, you know, I was trying to pick guys that, you know, we said, well, if I put this person in, I have to take out that person. And I said, well, you can take out Gene Wilder, you know, even though I was married to Gilda Radner. He was a comedic actor. He wasn't a comedian or a comic. Yeah. Um, I had Ed Wynn in there because Ed Wynn, you know, started out in vaudeville and did. Oh did yeah, comedy. and Ed, Ed Wynn had one-liners. Yeah, but it was yeah. hard to even find one-liners yeah. for him. Um, I wish that I would have. Yeah, I put in Brad Garrett as course, Jerry Seinfeld. How, I, 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 audience, raise your hand. How many people know who Ed Wynn was? You know, time passes and these comedians get forgotten, and especially current generations who never lived in those times don't even know who Ed Wynn is. People forgot me the day after I did Norm Crosby's comedy shop in 1979. <laughs> so I, I know how we feel. Um, you know, every time I think of Ed Wynn, I just get that Twilight Zone episode with the pitch for the angels. But, yeah. you know, he goes way back. And um, He was also uh, in, uh, what was the one about the uh, Jewish girl in the attic? Uh, um, oh, Anne Frank? Anne Frank. <laughs> the Diary of Anne Frank. I think he was in that. Oh, was he? Yeah, played like an uh, uncle or something. Oh, I don't remember. But, you know, so anyway, there were a lot of people in there that, um, you know, that, that when, I, when I proofread the book, and I didn't really proofread it, but anyway, there's a big introduction by me. So the book originally said, and I made no money off the book, so there's no reason to talk to you really about this, but uh, the, intro, it, it, the original cover of the book was um, edited by Tony Norman, the publisher, mm -hmm. with, uh, it's an introduction by Bobby Slayton, but I guess Tony was being very magnanimous and decided... I did so much work on the book, he would put me down also as the author. So there's why I never told you about my book. Okay, because okay? it really isn't your book, but you researched it. It's what you did. I did the research on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I wish there was a few more comics that I would have gotten in there. Like I said, I forgot. I don't know how I forgot because he's a good friend of mine. We did shows together. You know, Robert Schimmel. I mean, Lewis Black is in there. Buddy Hackett's in there. There's, you know, I, I'd say there's a good 10 comics you know that, but again, it's not a comprehensive encyclopedia of, of like jokes. How, how many comics. how many comics are in there? I don't. That's a good question. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, maybe thirty, forty. Yeah. Um, maybe I, you know what? I get the book in front of I me. Mean, I mean, Gilbert Gottfried has to be in there because he's as Jewish a comedian as I've ever met. You know? Right. Well, you know what? But it's interesting because I would look at a like, like I like it went online. A, a, a list of Jewish comedians. And there were people that, you know, like I said, Robert Schimmel wasn't on there. Andrew Dice Clay wasn't on. He's not in the book. I totally forgot about him. But uh, like yeah, I said, Dice not everybody could fit in that book. I thought also he had Joan Rivers um, in there, of course. I said, you know, you should also have, because she was sort of like, in the 1960s, one of the first women comics, along with Joan, was Tony Fields. Yeah. She was a groundbreaking comic. I mean, she was a little corny and a little borscht belty, but she was overweight and she made fun of herself and she was on Ed Sullivan all the time. So she had to be in there, you know? Yeah. Uh, today, um, nobody knows who Toadie Fields is. Today, no. nobody. But but no. back then, anybody who watched Ed Sullivan knew who Toadie Fields was. And she was married to Ed Wynn. What a coincidence. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but that's, so that's the story. It's, a, it's just like a nice... Little coffee table book, you know, Rickles, of course, is in there. And, um, um, you know, I didn't pick all the jokes. Tony had done some of the research and had some of them. So I was just kind of, you know, like, like Brad Garrett's in there. Brad Garrett's a very funny guy, but he never let a one liner. So I had to really search for one liners for some of these people. Um, and he had put Gilda Radner in there, but he had quoted all the Rosanna Downer, whatever her name was. Those are yeah. the Rosanna Downer jokes. He also put Fran Lebowitz in there who he wanted in there, who, by the way, had some very, very funny lines, but certainly isn't a comic or a, a comedian. No, she doesn't Fran is a writer yeah. and a satirist and a speaker yeah. and a writer. She's, she's not a comic, but he wanted her in there. You know, so, you like know said, actually, what, what's the title of the book? A Small Book uh, of Jewish Comedians. It probably should have been Jewish Comedians. It probably should have been Funny Jewish People. Because when you do Fran Lebowitz, she deserves to be in a book on funny Jewish people. But right. comics, I, I, comedians, I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's a real, I mean, and I do, I watch her, and every time she's in an interview, I laugh. Oh, she's very, very funny. And the, you saw that thing she did, remember, 
uh, what is the Martin Scorsese thing? Remember what it was? Yeah, they did like a five about? five parter or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah. and was, you saw it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It was brilliant, and Scorsese didn't stop laughing, and I, I thought it was so entertaining. I She's swear, so I swear that I know her from somewhere. That I, in in my career, I have come across her or been well, in a probably, room. I mean, with you her. live in New York. She's a real New York animal. You yeah, know, yeah, you probably saw her in a restaurant or something. This she may have been when I was that. first here in New York. That I, I I came into contact with Fran Lebowitz, but I don't remember. I don't remember. No. Of course, well, I don't remember a lot of things. Remember. I don't a lot of We're things. We're getting old. No, well, of course. We're getting old, Alex. We don't remember a lot of things. I don't. I, I don't I, remember um, what I had for lunch five minutes ago. You know. Right. So. Um, and Lane Boozler, I had to put in there. You know, and as I was going through the, uh, as I kept sending Tony a list, I went, wait, one more, one more, one more, and he goes, well, if I put that person in, I have to drop this person, because the book only had so many pages. I, I didn't realize when you write a book. Unless you go to a, you know, a larger grid and add more pages and add more bigger, cost you more money. It, it's a much more expensive book. So you had a certain amount of pages that I had to work with, and you know I couldn't get everybody in there. You know, I mean, we could have done a whole book just on Catskill comedians. This could have been this, well represented. If you think about it, this could have been a, a coffee table book. You know, with pictures of all the people and, you know, the little biography. Well, it is a and coffee stuff. table book. And if you have a very small coffee table, yeah. it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Because um, it's a small book of Jewish comedians. And uh, yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, that, that's very good, Bobby. You know. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's interesting, the, the ones you came up with, because you and I, uh, I'm older than you are, but you and I come in a time frame where we remember a lot of comedians who have since been forgotten completely. You know, um, Toadie Fields I'm was sorry. a perfect example of that. Who is? Toadie Fields. Oh, Tony Fields, yeah. yeah. Well, there's other guys, too, that so many people don't know that are very famous. I mean, I, I think almost, yeah, Positive Red Buttons is in there. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, more so and Lenny Bruce are in there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see the book. It's a, yeah, he also had Alan Sherman in there. And Alan Sherman, I guess, was a comedian, but he was more of like, like Tom Lehrer. He was a singing, what do you call him? He was a the, the songs, yeah, yeah, huh? Parodies, yeah. parodies. Yeah. And, yeah. But he's in there. Um, um but if we would have called it funny Jewish people, you still wouldn't have been in there, Alex. So, you know, yeah, I, I don't I, I never consider myself funny. Well, I, you're not alone in that. <laughs> 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 oh, I can always go to you to have my self-esteem yeah. killed in a second. Well, you like Bud Abbott. A lot of people didn't think he was funny, but he was really the funnier of the two. If you want to say and analyze it. Well, you know? actually, people don't understand this. And I and I and I it always oops, I always bring this up that uh, this, when people see a team, the straight man is usually the better of the two because right. he has to set up the funny one. Right. And so Bud Abbott had to have spot-on timing. Oh, he's magnificent. You don't really realize Costello didn't kid. need to have the timing. Right. You know, all he needed right. to do was go... <laughs> yeah. right. right. Well, they were both very That's funny. My impression. Beautiful That's my impression of... Lou Costello scene, Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. my, my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but, <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite movie, and it's, it's always funny. It, and when I was a kid growing up, I mean, it was so. Well, there was a Quentin Tarantino interview a year or two ago. I mean, you talk about he, a walking he, encyclopedia. I think he said that was one film. of his favorite films. One of his favorite films of all time, because as a kid, well, you realize it now. You know, when they're blending horror with comedy. I mean, people have, of course, done that since. You know, even right. if you look at the West Scream or whatever, there's a million movies where they put a little comedy in there. But that was really when the monsters all and played it straight. And it was a magnificent film. When you're a little kid, it's scary and funny. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and that was the only movie I could think of, except maybe for March of the Wooden Soldiers or Wizard of Oz. But that was funny and scary. I, so just, I, that, uh, when I was a kid, that was one of my favorite films. Oh my God! Okay, uh, and um, you know I liked Abbott and Costello when I was a kid. When I grew up, right. uh, I became more sophisticated, and they weren't as funny yeah. to me anymore. Yeah, I, I, I find some of their stuff very funny, but I don't really yeah. watch them like I used I'll to. I'll tell you I who I never. I wonder if these guys made your book. Uh, did the Marx Brothers make your book? Well, that's what's interesting. Graf shows in there, of course, but you know I said you you have to put the Marx Brothers in. And you really need to put the Three Stooges in. That's what the I three was going to say. Jewish. Yeah. And you need to put the Ritz brothers, who nobody knows. Right. But So what Tony did, and it was brilliant, I thought, 
was it op- the book opens up? Yeah, like I said, you get a copy of the next week or two. There's a picture of the Marx Brothers, the three Marx Brothers. Mm-hmm. I know mean, there was more. You don't want to go if you open Zuppo and Gummo. But um, so there, there, there were was actually the Marx the, Brothers. There were the five Marx Brothers, actually. Right, right. There's Zuppo and Gummo, yeah. yeah. So there was, um, uh, um, um, there was the Ritz Brothers, the Marx Brothers, the Three Stooges. And then my friend John Kish, who's a photographer who also wrote that book, of, you know, compiled that book of black movie posters, has a nice shot of three of me. Um, so the three Bobby Slaytons, and, and before my introduction. Wow. Um, so yeah, it was pretty, very well done. But again, if you're going to quote people, what are you going to put for the three stooges? Yuck, yuck, yuck. I mean, they, they didn't say anything that could be, <laughs> there were no one-liners, but that's great that you opened the book with, you know, three of those. Well, these um, were these were people that even though they weren't stand-up comedians, in other words, they weren't one guy getting on stage. Right. Okay. Uh, they were... Uh, um, definitely uh, comedians. I mean, they were, they were, there was no, they did their act in vaudeville. They did their act right. on stages, you know, right. so th- that qualifies them for this. Book. Well, what's interesting too is the picture of the Marx Brothers, Riss Brothers, and the Stooges, they were all brothers. I mean, they, they, I think the picture doesn't have Curl, uh, uh, no, Larry Fine, of course, wasn't uh, a yeah. brother, yeah. but they have Shemp, and um, uh, I think the picture is Shemp, not Curly, but whatever. Yeah. But well, anyway, yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you, uh, I'll tell you something. Um, it, it, I was going to just say, I just thought of one. Uh, how about did Burns and Allen, but you couldn't do Allen. You had to do Burns. No, yeah, I, I, George Burns, I'm pretty sure, is in there. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm almost positive George Burns is in there. Yeah. Um, how about again, how, how about Nichols and May? Were they Jewish? Yeah. No. No? No, I looked. Really? No. no. They weren't. Oh. Woody Allen's in there. Of course, um, he had to be you in know, there. Carl Reiner's in there. You know, I mean, it's, it's a great book. Um, but if you see, you look at this, like I said, there's a couple of dozen. Actually, I think you comedy. probably could have saved money if you had just done a book on Gentile comedians. Right. <laughs> right. Or, you know, well, because, well, you could have done black comedians. There's well, it seems. Why do you think it is that, that Jews were drawn to comedy as, you know a, what? Profession, as a profession? I don't know. I mean, they were. I don't know why. Is it the same I, I reason don't... why blacks are, are drawn towards basketball, for instance? That it was the one avenue open to them to make money. Right. Well, that's probably why Jews did it. And then, you know, black people as well, you know, mm-hmm. when you're brought up in poverty, you know. Right. <laughs> I think this has nothing to do with anything. But John Stewart, who's in the book, always had one of my favorite lines. Um, and I, I don't want to misquote the joke, but... Uh, um, how similar blacks and Jews are, you know, black people have the blues, the Jews complain. It's the same thing. We just never thought about putting it to music. Yeah, exactly. And that to me is one of the great lines of all time. Yeah. Anyway, John's in there. And um, like I said, Lewis Black is in there. My contemporaries. I couldn't get them all in there. A lot of people, I didn't get Carol Leifer in there. A lot of people don't know Carol, but, but a brilliant Carol. Well, Carol, Carol Leifer, if you, if you watch credits on TV shows, She's like, for instance, an executive producer on Be Positive now on CBS. She does a lot of stuff for Chuck Lorre. She was uh, kind of a producer and writer at uh, Seinfeld. And she did the first season or two, a couple of, well, she did a bunch of seasons, A Curb Your Enthusiasm. When I did Curb last year, and Larry Davis in the book, of course, Richard yeah. Lewis was in the book. Yeah. I couldn't get Jeff Garland in the book. Yeah, like I said, you know, if you really wanted a comprehensive encyclopedia of comedy, there could have been another. You're not going to be the favorite of a lot of comedians out there because you're going to go out to some gig and they'll say, why wasn't I in the book? Well, I'm not really yeah. going out to any gigs anymore. I'm pretty yeah. much retired, so I don't really give a shit. Can you still do your act, do you think? Or do you, would you have to go out and work a couple of I gigs? I did it last week at the Brea Improv. You know, a hundred people came out. But a lot of them came to see me. You know, because I asked, like Bubbles, I asked Bubbles this question, you know, um, about... Uh, being able to do your act after a long time and not doing it, he said the first couple of gigs were hell for him. You know, hey, every gig I've ever seen him do has been hell <laughs> <laughs> for everybody. Um, no, I, like I said, I did the last. Is week. bubbles uh, in the book? Wait a minute, bubble is bubbles isn't Jewish. He's not Jewish. Yeah. No, and it's and uh, Feldman's not in the book. He's the only people who were. I, I had to really pick and choose, and went with the most famous or the most important. And like like you said, people don't know Edwin or Tony Fields or. At least a dozen of the people are in that book. Um, yeah, um, I play Jack Car- is Jack Carter. Jack Carter, I think, is in the book, and um, you know, 
Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I could get, get a couple I, of I, I, read them off I, to you. I, I'm looking forward to it, actually. Phil Silver's in the book. And he didn't have a lot of jokes, but I love Phil Silver's. Great oh, comedic yeah. uh, actor, you know? Well, again, he and worked at didn't he, he didn't stand he, up as well. He did, he did vaudeville. Uh, he did vaudeville. Uh, vaudeville, I think, with the cat skills. So there were a lot of those guys that, um, you know, Sid Caesar didn't have a lot of one-liners. In fact, didn't, but didn't course, Silver's you know, do burlesque as well? I think so. Yeah. You know, I, there was I, a difference I, well, I between burlesque and uh, vaudeville. Vaudeville, you had a variety of acts. You know, you come right. on after a juggler. Right. Uh, in burlesque, there were these skits between the women taking their clothes off. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, or dance or whatever they were doing. But, um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of people that certainly didn't get in there. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, if we did just on the cat skills, I picked a nice group of people to represent that era. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, whoever I thought I could remember who was important. And I, like I said, I didn't put Myron Cohen in there because I couldn't find any jokes for him. I barely found him for Steve Landisberg. I had to sit and watch a Griffin show. I never so, found Myron Cohn funny. I, I didn't either, but he was before my time. So You I, know what he was? It was like, uh, it was always kind of like, you know, here's what's funny about Jewish people. You right. know? And it was just, it, it just hit me wrong. I just didn't feel comfortable with his comedy. Right. Right. I felt yeah, it was right. kind of being what, what we call a Shonda for the Goyim. You know? Right, there you go. Yeah. You know, my first manager, Jackie Kahane, who opened for Elvis, um, along with Sammy Shore, who yeah. opened for Elvis. They're not in the book. I couldn't fit them in there, but they're in my intro introduction. I mentioned them. You know, Norm Crosby, I think, is in the book. He put me on my first TV show back in the 70s. So that's the story, you wow. know? So yeah. it's called The Small Book of Jewish Comedians. And, uh, the only paycheck I'm getting for that is the publishers buying me dinner tonight at a very nice uh, West Hollywood restaurant. Okay. And, um, and now I have Christmas gifts to send out. My handwriting is so abominable. I used to have really nice handwriting. You know something? I, I, I can't stamp. even sign my signature anymore. I can't sign it anymore. I go, Bennett. is Bennett right. Schwarzman. Bennett, G. I can get those out, kind of. And then I go to right. S-E-H-W-A-R-Z, and by the end of it, it's just like the straight line. Yeah, well, I signed them. Yeah. It's like it looks like a lie detector test. But um, I wonder you know, I why I wonder why you lose. Like when you're a kid, you 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 write perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I think you. I don't know. Who knows? My girlfriend's mother has a. She's like in her seventies, late seventies. Beautiful handwriting. And my girlfriend's in her fifties. Beautiful handwriting. So I think it's different for every person. So what I did was. I just made up a stamp. They gave me a couple of cases of books. I'm sending them out, and I stamped the book with Merry Christmas and a Happy Jew Year. So I had a stamp made up for that, so I didn't have to write it. Oh. <laughs> the lazy man's way to spend Christmas. Yeah. And Merry Christmas and Happy Jew Year. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So we done? I got to go back to work. I'm working okay, on Okay, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let you go this time, but I want to talk to you again really soon because I got a whole bunch of things I want to ask you. Yeah. All right, well, as soon as the somebody kills himself in my house again. Or no. I find out, you know, more, when it gets wanted again, I'll call you. I'm threatening. Things to ask me. I don't know what. You, what do you think you possibly have to ask me? You haven't asked me before, but okay. Well, I'm but I'm, what I was going to ask you today was when I thought about your life. We're going over here, but when we were were talking about your life, uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that you probably, in spite of your act and your demeanor, are one of the most. Well, to begin with, I'd say I'd like to use the word romantic, but I at least would say monogamous people I've ever known. Yeah, you, I mean, you monogamous. find you find a girlfriend and you go with that girlfriend. You marry that wife. You you're with that wife. You know. Yeah. Well, I was really look. I was married for thirty years, and there were, you know, a couple of little rough patches over the years. You know, sure, whatever. of course. But um, yeah. That was fine. Yeah. But my girlfriend, oh my God, you know, I've been with her for five and a half years already. And neither of us would even consider. Look, if I had to go, if I was on the road somewhere and I was sitting in the bar and Taylor Swift came up to me and said, Bobby Slayton, I'm your biggest fan. I have to sleep with you. Yeah, I'd have to do it. And I, would, I don't think I'd tell my girlfriend. But, but you see, I'd feel so guilty about that that I'd be nicer to my girlfriend. Well, if I didn't fuck Taylor Swift, then I'd go back and want to strangle my girlfriend because I had a great opportunity. Either way, it's a lose-lose I don't know who's It's not going to happen. I don't know whose so, joke you know, this it, was. was. Good. I don't know whose joke this was, but my wife and I have a deal. We have a, kind of our uh, get-out-of-jail-free list, and she had to name a guy that she wanted to have sex with, and I named a, a woman, then I could name a woman that I wanted to have sex with. And, uh, and we could have it, and it would be okay. And so she picked, uh, and there was some, I don't know, George Clooney. 
And uh, so I picked the babysitter. <laughs> I knew jump that is. That's very funny. I don't know whose joke it is. Anyway, hey, listen, let's do this again in a couple of weeks. I love talking to you. you right, well, you know what? When you get the book, you can call. I, there's not really anything to talk okay, about. Okay, I'll call you in a couple. Of, I'll, I'll give talk. you a thing. A couple of weeks, we'll do this again, and I'll ha right. we'll have looked at the book, and I can tell you how much I love it. By the way, I, I, I you know when you called me the first few times to do this, I, I told you I had a doctor appointment. I got exterminated coming. I'm, I'm doing it. Usually, I have nothing to do. Nothing that, you know, maybe plant a few plants or eat breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Well, I just figured you'd had a real busy life, and it's gone yeah. from playing gigs to getting exterminators to come over and kill rats. It's fine. I love yeah. this. Working out, hanging out. I don't want to ever do anything again. I've done enough. St stick around after we're through here, Bobby. That's Bobby Slayton, ladies and gentlemen. He's appearing right. absolutely nowhere. All right. I'm going to go. I'm hungry. I'm going to go make breakfast. <laughs>